Hello everyone. Welcome to the Language Hotpot. This is Anya. And this is Marwan. And in this channel we talk about words and foods from all around the world to show how different cultures are connected to one another. So what do sweet potatoes, canoes and stone axes have in common? Investigating this question will take us through the incredible story of the Polynesians. Did you know that they crossed the Pacific Ocean and reached America centuries before Columbus? Okay, cool. So let's dive in. Most people have heard of Columbus, who reached America in 1492. Words like avocado, potato or chocolate originally come from indigenous languages of the Americas and spread across the world as a consequence of European colonialism. However, Columbus was not the first to discover the continent. First of all, Native Americans arrived there thousands of years ago, crossing over from Asia. They were the first humans to get there and the true discoverers of America. We also know that around 1000 AD, Vikings reached the coast of Canada. Their expeditions are mentioned in all Norse sagas and in the 60s, archaeologists found actual remnants of a Viking settlement on the island of Newfoundland. But what about the other side? Recently, it has been proven that from the other side, North and South Americans must have come in contact with Polynesians at the latest around 1150 AD. Polynesian people have lived on many of the islands in the Pacific, for example Hawaii, Easter Island or Aotearoa, New Zealand. Not only do they all speak closely related languages, in fact, all Polynesian languages belong to a much bigger Austronesian family of languages spoken literally across half of the globe, from Madagascar to Hawaii. Those people had some mad sailing skills, just think about it. They reached as far as Madagascar off the coast of Africa, to Hawaii in the west, and as far south as New Zealand. Since Polynesians basically roamed all around the place, scholars have long suspected that they might have at some point made it to the Americas too. A study of chicken bones from a pre-Columbian archaeological site in Chile found their DNA sequences identical to prehistoric chickens in Samoa and Tonga. Could chickens have been brought to America by Polynesian explorers? Just this year, a genetic study fresh from the oven has finally proven that Polynesians from different islands across the Pacific have some Native American ancestry, dating back to around 1150 AD. This means we now know for sure that Polynesians must have come in contact with Native Americans, who perhaps got some chickens out of it. So was it Polynesians who reached America? Or Native Americans who made it to the Pacific Islands? Given the Polynesians' famous mastery of sailing skills, the first scenario seems much more likely. Besides genetics, there is also linguistic evidence for this early Trans-Pacific contact. Let's take a closer look at these three words. Sweet potato, humara, canoe, tomolo, and stone axe, toki. Sweet potatoes are commonly eaten across Polynesia, but the plant itself is native to the tropical regions of America, so it must have arrived in Polynesia from there. But how? Was it imported by European explorers? This question got a first answer when archaeologists found remnants of sweet potatoes in the Cook Islands dating back to the 11th or 12th century. The plant had clearly reached Polynesia long before Europeans even made it to the area. So, did Polynesian explorers reach America and travel back with a precious load of sweet potatoes? Critics of this theory have pointed out that the potatoes could have actually reached Polynesian islands without any human involvement. Birds and waves could have spread the seeds all across the Pacific. But that would not account for the similarity of names. In Polynesia, sweet potatoes are known in different languages as Kumara or Kumala. And South American Aymara and Quechua also call sweet potatoes Kumara or Kumar. So it really looks like Polynesians brought back the plant from America together with the local name for it. 
Polynesians developed a unique method of making canoes by stitching planks of wood together. It is remarkable that the same canoe building technology was also used by two Native American communities along the Pacific coast, by the Mapuche in what is now Chile and way north on the Californian coast by the Chumash. Sadly, all Chumash languages are extinct today. The last native speaker, herself a linguist who played a big role in documenting the language, passed away in 1965. But surviving sources tell us that the Chumash called themselves people of the Tomol, and Tomol was the word for a son canoe. Tomol sounds similar to a few Polynesian words for trees, wood, and also timber. And it gets even more similar when we consider that the ancient pronunciation of the Chumash word was something like Tomolo, and of Proto Central Eastern Polynesian, Tumurao or Tumulao. Pretty close, huh? So it is possible that the Chumash learned to make their canoes from Polynesian sailors, and together with the technique, they also borrowed a word originally meaning wood for canoes and used it as their term for the canoes themselves. Stone axes are very widespread worldwide, so it is not surprising to find them both in the Americas and in Polynesia. But the remarkable thing is that across Polynesia, axes are called toki, and the same word means stone axe also in South American Mapuche. The communities share not only the term toki, but also a few cultural traditions. Mapuche are famous for making clubs with a peculiar design a handle with a crescent or bird head shaped body. This shape is quite unique around the world except for clubs found in Polynesia, for instance among the Maori in New Zealand. They also have the same cultural significance. In both traditions, the crescent club were used by warriors as symbols of their rank. And there is more. Just like Maori warriors, Mapuche war leaders used to wear a toki axe blade as a necklace symbolizing their power. Among the Maori, this practice actually survives until today, and it has even made it to Hollywood. The Polynesian Hawaiian actor Jason Momoa wears a toki in the movie Aquaman. And do you remember that the Mapuche were also the only ones in South America with Polynesian style sewn canoes? The genetic study this year has finally proven beyond doubt that Native Americans had some contact with Polynesians before the arrival of Columbus. And on the other hand, the linguistic and cultural evidence shows us that this contact was important enough to lead to actual cultural exchange. All these elements put together paint a picture of interactions across the Pacific Ocean and show that the American continent was connected with the rest of the world already before European colonization. Amazing, isn't it? That's it for today. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. And see you next time.